really, 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 really advise you to watch a video lecture and then answer a question. Not try to go to the part of lecture which is relevant to question. It will be much easier and it's, it is my main goal that you will be free with this material and it will be easier for you. In context of lecture, question is much easier than if you just try to memorize short part. Okay. That's a question, please. Is, yeah. Does any, anybody agree with me? It's good. It's good for you. Just do it even on speed two, then the total time of all lectures may be six hours. It's not, it's not, it's not so long. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, and let's, uh, let's move, let, let's move to mathematics and maybe then we will okay, continue. Okay, mathematical okay. questions. Uh, I have a question about uh, question uh, 24. Uh, I don't understand exactly. Ah, oh, I need numbers. Uh, can, can you say loudly what, what is the question? Uh, yeah, of course. Second, we will show the screen. Just, just say it uh, okay, in few, 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 few words. Okay. Um, ah. We're supposed to uh, find the Jacobian um, of a computational graph. Um, yes. uh, to multiply it by arbitrary way. vector, yes? To multiply Jacobian by a vector z. I, I, now yeah. I remember okay. the, the question. And thank you very much. This is one of the central questions in in our course. Okay. It's, it's, it's very in, in, important. Uh, let me start uh, doing something. I don't understand what we're supposed to develop in this Yes, process. yes, yes, exactly. I, I'm already answering. I'm <laughs> answering. The only thing I should put, uh, I should pin my video to have my video full screen and uh, recording this work yes okay maybe turn a little bit in this way okay so uh assume i have a computational graph if this is x and uh, there are some nodes that do something maybe this way and this way and okay, I, I will not make it very long and, and you get why. Yes? And uh, uh, just a second, I may take a better pen. And uh, we say that, uh, wow, it's a break in my lecture, so my pens become great. Why is there some function of X? And uh, here are some weights, uh, W1, W2, and so on. And here are maybe some nonlinear functions, phi, sigma, and so on, like it was in, in the lecture. And uh, I may ask uh, a question, if I make the differential of x, if I put d, d, dx here, I can answer what will be dy. Okay. Okay. And to get this connection, I, I, I don't have some other net, network which is very similar to this one, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> something. We change some things. Uh, but uh, the important difference, the first yeah. network. Uh, the first computational graph is nonlinear, and the second will be linear because the relation between dx and d, d, dy, we, we, we know that d, dy is just Jacobian multiplied by dx. Yeah, so right. This graph should be linear. It, it uh, includes derivatives of these functions computed. Under, under given state of the network, not for any x, but for given x, okay? <clears throat> and now, 
I have this new network and I and it, it expresses this. But uh, for many situations in the life, I want to multiply Jacobian of this function by some arbitrary vector. It may be needed for, I don't know, for optimization of neural network, for example, or for many other goals. So, so I, I want to multiply Jacobian by arbitrary vector z. How can I do it? It's very easy. Uh, I already have this, this network, it's linear. This is linear graph. And instead of dx, I put z here. And here I will get G multiplied by Z. Okay. Uh, okay. Is this what you want to see like for the answer? For the yes, question for uh, just explain something like I did now on the whiteboard and what it is, uh, it, it is also in like the video. A, in yes? general, I don't know. So uh, enough with example. Enough with, with very short, uh, with very brief example to understand the, to explain the idea. So we supposed <laughs> and to I, I, and I think it, in this way it was explained in the video, as, as I remember, I hope. Okay, yeah, I'm with you, sorry. Okay. Should we mention in, in, in such an explanation some keywords like uh, back propagation. No, no, he, he, no, no. Where did you find the back, back propagation? I just want you to watch this video. Who is talking about back propagation? Maybe didn't watch this video yet. Jacobian well, of no, no, you you ex, you you have explained back propagation in a short video. In other video. Video. Just a second, just a second, just a second. I have a video which is called uh, something like Jacobian of computational graphs. Yes? You know, it's easy. Uh, just just second, to, please uh, remind me the, the name of this video. Easy way to compute Jacobian. Yes, exactly. What I explained to you now is part of this video. This is much more general. In some sense, it's more general than what uh, we tell about neural networks very tightly related, but it's a more general statement that you may multiply Jacobian by arbitrary vector, which has nothing to do with dx and d, dy, just arbitrary vector. <coughs> what I'm trying to understand is uh, right now explaining this in video, in, like I understand what you just did, you want me to do the same, but- Yes, when I and uh, first, first of all, I want you to watch the video yeah, I watched did you it. explain this uh, almost exactly as I did now? Yeah, yeah understand it by explaining, yes. but this is something else. What do you want? What do you want me to write down? Like, if you ask me this on an exam, or like, I, I uh, only to know put in, to put in words what, what I told you now. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very good. And uh, okay. believe me, it's very important. I met so many people that were happy after watching this video, because uh, quite, quite often in very many applications in physics, in engineering, you, you need to optimize very difficult function, which may include even matrix expressions and matrix graphs, which you will see in the end of this video. <clears throat> and for people, usually it's a really difficult challenge. And this like opens you easy way to, to do it. So we need to bring, a, a, I don't know, example of a simple graph in the exam? Yes. Or yes. you will give us the graph? Yeah, no, no, the most simple graph you can imagine. We can create it, okay. The, like, like I did now, really, even much simpler than it was in the lecture. Yeah. Even with three nodes, it's enough to explain the concept, yes? Okay, uh, other questions? Can we uh, go over to question? Uh, uh, just a second, I have a question I, I didn't finish. Uh, so we're not supposed to find the exactly uh, Jacobian. We just need uh, to, to, um, to draw the, the graph and the opposite graph and, and that's it. 
We don't need to who, write uh, down. Who, uh, sorry, who is talking now? Um, it's Javad. Yeah, I see you under a different name. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to tell Nikki, but Nikki is something, somebody else. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're starting together. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good, good. So, so th thank you again for very good question. So the, the main conclusion here that multiply by Jacobian is very easy and very cheap. It's, and it's uh, very strange. It even looks very, very strange to multiply. This may be huge matrix, yes? If, if, if I have uh, uh, 10,000 X and 10,000 Y, Jacobian is matrix 10,000 by 10,000. But uh, maybe I will pin the video. Well, how can I? I never know. Ah, speak, speaker view. Uh, so it's very challenging to write down Jacobian itself. That, but to multiply arbitrary vector by Jacobian, it's very easy. This is the major message. And thank you very much. Is this, this was your question about? Yeah, I just don't okay. understand. We're supposed to. to you write down the exactly Jacobian is in this question? No, you don't need Jacobian. I even don't know what is Jacobian, all, all this stuff. I know okay. how to multiply Jacobian by Z. It's very easy. I just put Z into entrance of this very simple linear network. So you want us to explain that it's the same thing? Um, to... Because why, why, why I know that it's, it's true? Because I, if I put D, DX to this network, I get dy, but dy okay. is related to dx is multiplying by Jacobian. So this okay. network should be multiplier by Jacobian. Okay, see it now, thank you. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. For, this was very important question. <coughs> okay, good. Uh, more, more questions? I have a question about uh, uh, question uh, 32. Uh, tell it in, in, in words, please. Derive the gradient of the barrier log at the terminate of... Ah, lo log uh, that... Uh, okay, let me remove it. But this you have exactly in the lecture. Maybe your question is what part of development do, do you need to, to put? So, so you, you need a gradient of log that... And there was a difficulty of expressing, I have calligraphic, uh, AX uh, minus or plus B. So the, uh, you, you, you remember in semi-definite programming, you have an operator which maps from uh, usual vector to matrices. And this, uh, what you have in the equations in this way, uh, means uh, calligraphic A. Okay, and and this development is in the lecture, yes? Again, I need to... Uh, not exactly, I, at least I didn't see it. Uh, in the second lecture, it, towards end, uh, there is a de development of this, all this stuff. I, I saw a development uh, of uh, AX uh, minus B maybe, but I didn't understand how you showed it the you mark the ax plus b as a, a and then you show that the okay you 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 are right so there, there are two sta two stages first mm -hmm. of all uh, I, you require with respect to x yes and yes. first you can consider more easy situation you have log that a and uh, what is gradient with respect to A of this expression? This was in the lecture, yes? Yeah. And, and then in the end of, after, after we got this expression, in the end of the lecture, there is, there is a discussion, or you, you know, you, you are already developed in, 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 in enough. You, you, if, if I have this expression, yes, and... Uh, and I ask you, if, if, if I have a function f, which is, I, I need to take 
with the prince. Sorry. One second. Uh, as, 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 assume. Okay, okay, let me remove something. I I de, I de, de, defined my f of x. Yes. As as this. And uh, but uh, I, I I have some. Uh, okay, uh, let me think fast. And I, I have another function uh, that is log def a. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let let, uh, let us ask. Uh, uh, okay, okay uh, log that a uh, g g of a. Okay. Uh, f f f of x f of x is g of a of x yes are you with me yeah yeah okay uh what is uh, df uh this is uh, the same as d dg yes and and what is d dg this uh, gradient of g gradient of g with respect to a multiplied by da okay this is our usual are you with me yeah yeah well him i i am uh, i hope that you follow me we, we are following Not only here but also follow the potential of uh, a function, uh, you know, G is not good to use because we let let me let use it as H. Let me use H here. H with, with respect to A. Okay, and, and uh, what is D D A? Is uh, A calligraphic multiplied by D X? D we have it here, yes? And uh, okay, so it's a gradient. Uh, I, I have its uh, gradient of H with, with, uh, with uh, respect to A, inner product with A calligraphic DX. And what we do in uh, such situations, because we want uh, our D df be inner product of something with dx. We want dx to be alone. What usually we do in these situations, we put linear, we move linear op operator here, but it should be adjoint, yes? Yeah. yeah. If anybody, this is only for those my friends who seated during semester with me in the lectures and others need to work hard to be free with this. So, so it, it will be a, a calligraphic adjoint. No, let, let me do this space. How can I do this? I'm not sure that I did it good. Well, uh, multiplied by gradient with respect to a of h, yes, uh, in a product with dx. Can you maybe uh, uh, put to the camera? Yes, yes, I, I will do. Okay. Can you maybe explain how can you how can we compute the gradient uh, of h with respect to a? Gradient of h with respect to a. This was in the lecture. Yes. Yeah, but I saw that 
it's equal to like mi minus i um, inverse, and I don't understand how. Uh, it uh, yes, so, uh, something like this. Main minus a, even if a is not sym symmetric. You don't understand this development, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Ah, but it, it is in the lecture. How how can I help you to go again with the development of the lecture? Let leave uh, let leave it open. Let uh, try to to watch this part of the lecture and uh, ask your friends. I'm asking your discussion mm -hmm. group, and if you will not get answer, uh, return to me. Okay. It's very central okay. question, but I, I I'm not uh, I'm not sure that I am able to reproduce the whole lecture now in a few minutes. Okay. I just give you a brief idea how if I know this I can get gradient of this yes, and uh, how to get this? Okay, let uh, remove all this stuff because you already have it recorded. Uh, let's remove all this stuff. I am not sure that you, that everybody follows me, but uh, okay, nothing to do. So, uh, and we, we asked it uh, as a very different, very basic question. I have a, a f of a, a function of a matrix. Which, by the way, in, in general, f of a is matrix, maybe a to the some power or exponent of a, and we and I we take trace of this function, and and we we prove that gradient with respect to a yes of trace of f of a is f prime. Uh, Maybe of a transpose. Does anybody remember? I don't remember. Uh, it maybe. I think I think you need you need a trace. I think you need the trace. Maybe. No, no. This is the secret. This is the secret. Uh, pay uh, pay pay attention. F of a is a matrix. Yes, it may be matrix exponent or you. You you can say you can think in easiest way, uh, a q, yes, f of yeah. a maybe a q. And I, I I showed you in the lecture the gradient with respect to a of a q of of trace trace of a q, yes. You forgot the trace in the right side the, in the first yeah. row. Just a second, just a second. I, I remember the, the question. First of all, thank you very much. The, the answers are really principal uh, the questions are really principal questions and very important. Okay, so uh, I want to compute the gradient of this expression. And I got to the conclusion that it uh, is equal to three a squared. Michael, can you please uh, repeat the connection was uh, stuck. Okay. Um, now do you, do, do you hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. So the, for, here is the, the very simple example and very basic. Let's look carefully. What is a q? Is a matrix, yes? What is trace of a matrix? It's numbers, scalar. What is written here is scalar function of a matrix. If I have scalar function of a matrix, what is its gradient? If I have a scalar function of a vector, the gradient is vector, yes? Yeah. If I have a, a scalar function of a matrix, the gradient is matrix. It shouldn't be the trace here. It's a matrix. And we had a very nice development, a very short development in the lecture with differential, yes? Showing, and you even have uh, 
some questions in your exam list in general, yes? A to the power K. Do you have number three? Is it question number three? Yes, I think that it is question number three. Question number three. So you should know this. Ah, it, it was like this, yes? It was without answer. And now I discover you what is answer in particular case. <coughs> okay, so we have this relation. So, uh, I, I, so if, if, if I have a, a fun function f uh, some p of t, or, or you, you know f, f, f of t, f of t, t is sc uh, scalar, is uh, t cube. What is f prime of t? It's, it's three times uh, two t square. Three t square. Do 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 you see that what I have here? It's uh, f prime of a. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. This is the very basic thing. So we got to the conclusion that. If I have trace of f of a, its gradient is just to apply derivative of this scalar function, but to the matrix. And now we, we only say that determine. Uh, we, we we say that the, the, there is one more. I I I reproduce you the whole lecture log that uh, a. What is determinant of A? It's a product of, uh, here I have product of uh, eigenvalues, yes? Do you know this property of the determinant of a matrix? It's product of its eigenvalues. We proved it already. Uh, so we, we have this log of product of eigenvalues it's uh, sum of log of eigenvalues, sum of log lambda i, and and this is uh, the same as the trace trace of uh, log lambda, and and we, we told the trace of log lambda the same as the uh, as the trace of log a. Okay, let me, okay. Now, <laughs> trace log A. Uh, at least now you, you, you are ready to go again to this lecture and uh, un understand everything there. Okay. Do, do we assume the A is symmetric or diagonal? Um, Actually, we, we only assume in this, the, uh, and by the way, should be somewhere transpose here. I think you are right. Uh, maybe here point. should be tra transpose. Yeah, yeah. A, a square transpose or a transpose square, something like this, uh, transpose. Okay, uh, just a second. No, no, we, we only assume that A is diagonalizable. We, we assume that A is uh, some, uh, S is lambda, some uh, S lambda S inverse. Even not, uh, even we do not uh, require that this is orthogonal. It's, so we, we don't require even that from A to be symmetric. You assume she, she's positive semi-definite because no, no, she... No, no, like no, you, you, can, you can't use the log, log determinate B. Despite that you will be right, that somewhere on the way you may need to assume this. So if you want to derive this everything, I allow you, you to assume that matrix A is symmetric and positive definite. It's okay with me if you will be able to develop it, even with this uh, restriction. But you know, the most of development doesn't require nothing like this. 
you, Michael, can you remind where it's, uh, I, I where do you, you use the symmetric and the PSD in the, in the part when you go from log of the, the... No, no, I should leave this important details for you. I, 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 I give you only brief ideas now, not complete, uh, not complete exposition. No, why, why do we need the PSD and the symmetric? I, I don't know. Ah, okay. You, you are returning to very different questions. So should be, just a second, just a second. Uh, I, I should understand that we finished with this, otherwise I, you have to remove it, to erase it. Is uh, this development, do, do you have any questions about this development? Yes, what is it? Why you use the transpose here? I don't see why. Ah, what? So this, this is also part of the lecture. Ah, uh, 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 it's the guard, the transpose here. So we we just, uh, we just consider it. What is differential of this expression? Yes. If I, uh, what is written here? A multiplied by A by, by A and I take A as variable in the first place, in the second place, in the third place, and add, and if I consider inner product, somewhere a transpose comes. Okay, so uh, this is separate development in the lecture. So th this uh, C is the, the lecture. But it's very easy, and it's uh, question number three. You, you, you should know to, if anybody of you already solved question number three, I hope that you got, got transpose there. Did you get? Is here anybody who solved question number three? Okay, then try to do it. And the, the way to solve question number three is uh, in this lecture. Okay, so uh, should I remove it? Can I remove it or you want? I'll just if you can say again, why is it PSD and symmetric? Why do we need this in the development? I, I, I actually, I didn't use it uh, anywhere here. I didn't use, you, you might find some delicate issues that if you want log, yes, here. I you have to use it because log but is- But actually, if you are working with complex numbers, you maybe not need even this. Because with complex numbers, log is defined also for negative numbers. Okay. Okay, I, I, I will remove it. And uh, the, the, the only question, that there was a different discussion that, uh, Usually, when we say uh, some metrics is positive semi on Madim YouTube, uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Ah, I hope that recording will stay okay. Uh, sorry, I want I had to switch to my smartphone. Uh, just a second. I want speaker view. Do you, ah, wow, why don't, ah, I should pin video. Pin video and speaker view, and now you, you see me. Uh, do you hear? Yes. Hello? Yeah. Yes, yes, we can oh. hear you. Okay, very good, thank you. Uh, there was a uh, general question in uh, the discussion. When you say the matrix A is uh, positive semi-definite, usually it automatically says that A is symmetric. And uh, there is a mathematical discussion why it is right. 
uh, one of uh, the interesting, uh, do, do you hear something happens here? You hear me, yes? Yeah, yeah, well, so I think that uh, AR was asking something. Uh, uh, just a second, I, I, I know he, might, he could ask something different, but we had discussion about this question, so I need to finish it. So, so we, we say that uh, uh, when A is positive semi-definite, usually we, we think that A should be symmetric. The, 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 despite that you, you can say that the definition of positive semi-definite is X transpose A, 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 X uh, should be greater zero, uh, say positive definite, yes? Oh, greater or equal zero for any X. And this may be uh, true even for non-symmetric matrix. But interestingly, we, when you g go to the space of complex numbers, you need that uh, A to be Hermitian. It's symmetric and conjugate. A, A transpose, transpose is equal uh, A uh, adjoint, I don't know how can you say that. And uh, it's usually, denoted uh, as A star. A transpose adjoint is A star is equal to A. It's uh, Hermitian and uh, in particular in real numbers it's sim symmetric. J just for, for those who wanted, uh, a couple of students had this uh, question. So what bo bottom line, if you see anywhere about positive semi-definite cone and so on, so on, you automatically assume that uh, the matrices are symmetric. Okay, now back to, to, the, to the question. It was about, uh, yes, I, I'm with you, about log that still? Who was yeah. uh, the question? Was, the question is where you use the fact that uh, in the, what you just showed, where did you use it? I mean, where, what, uh, I mean, mathematical change you did was, not you you mean uh, yeah, where you developed uh, log dead of a? Uh, yeah, did you just did, why did you use this? Just a second. We, we, we told the gradient of log dead a, that a is uh, a minus t, a transpose inverse, you see this expression already says that it's for general matrix. It doesn't require no thing. Okay. So you it didn't will use be that? used. It will be used. Uh, just a second to, to, to accomplish everything. It will be used in semi-definite programming where you apply it to symmetric matrices. Symmetric and even positive definite, positive semi-definite. It's okay, but the formula itself, it, it, it is correct, it's in ma, much more general <clears throat> Okay. Okay, let, let's move to other questions. We have many questions, I, I guess. Um, Question. About the A-Cali graph you used before when you showed the, the sum part a, of a, the A-Cali graph, you, you should be familiar with this term, calli calligraphic A. We, we, we say, for, for example, we often write matrix A depending on X, it's uh, calligraphic A X, for example, plus B. Uh, you must, you must watch uh, this uh, two lectures on conic programming because it's very basic notation. Yeah, but the thing is we can uh, assume that calligraph A on X is a sum of XI multiplied by uh, AI when we have a group of A of M. Uh, you, you, you may assume, which are, you may uh, assume but usually, you assume uh, yes, you, you, you may assume what uh, you told right now. You what you told I, uh, uh, right now is that you, you may assume that AX, do you see, yes? It's uh, sum of uh, XI, AI, yes? But actually, in, the, in our questions, you don't need uh, this explicit expression. You, you only should assume that you, you, somebody give you also A, but also A, uh, a adjoint. You, you, you know to multiply A adjoint by arbitrary 
uh, matrix. By, by the way, A acts from <coughs> vectors to matrices, and A adjoint acts in opposite way. So you you apply it to a matrix Y, usually a symmetric <laughs> matrix Y. So you you can assume that you know this and you know this. You don't need to to open uh, what it is particular form because it's a uh, it's very general, but actually it's particular. You you may write this in many very different other forms as well. But if if, if it helps you, you you may assume this. And in the and by the way, if you have this, we developed in the lecture what will be apply a adjoint to y. Yes. Yeah. My only point was that we can assume that uh, we have a symmetric uh, solution, so we can uh, continue the. So we continue with a calligraph multiplied by x plus b must be symmetric for us to to develop the solution. Ah, ah you mean this in, in context of log d? You are correct that I don't really need to. Yeah, uh, you, you don't need. You don't need because this is very general writing, and when, when I say this, it's a particular case when this is symmetric. Yes, but you can say that there is a general case. And uh, you you assume that you would know apply a adjoint to any any. If we have a calligraph, then yeah, we can calculate the adjoint depending on which is the a calligraph operator specific. Yeah, yes, you you may assume that both are known for for you. When this is known, you may assume that this is known as as well. Yes, yes, th th this is good question. Thank you very much. You should assume and please. I need really volunteers and activists to help me after you write the answer to formulate questions to your answers. And maybe there are students that will write different answers to the same questions that were published in the 33 list. Because uh, there. Uh, uh, just one second. So. We, we conclude that in our question, we should write, assume that this is also known, yes? That A adjoint is known, yes? Because Actually, you, you will need A adjoint in your yes. expression for gradient with respect to X. So yes. you, you can mark that I am waiting from you that in this question, you add A adjoint is known. Okay, uh, and, and now with your questions, sorry, who, who was asking? J just tell your names, uh, it will be easier for me. Okay, it is Ron. Ron, ah, okay, ah, Ron, okay, sorry. I and, didn't recognize and uh, it's okay, I was, ju I was just uh, saying that it is very good you was you are about to remind us what is a adjoint uh, calligraphic, because... Okay, I, let, let's uh, accomplish this, this, this picture. So uh, to apply a joint, I, I don't know the, the operator itself, but I know to apply to any matrix. A adjoint Y in semi-definite programming, A adjoint Y is just a vector, uh, uh, sorry, it should be capital Y, because Y is a matrix. It's a vector with components, uh, In this way, A one Y and so on. A I Y. Where in a product between matrices, we will already know this is trace of one transpose another. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is from the lecture and it, it, it really makes your picture more complete. Thank you. This is only corresponding to the specific A calligraph you just mentioned there with the sum, right? Yes, yes. If, if you're A it, it is specific. On the other hand, it's very general. Any, any A may be expressed in this form, but somebody may prefer some other forms. Yes. For this specific A, this will be A again. <coughs> There was another another general uh, point uh, that what was just about to be discussed, but I think 
it is better to leave it for, you said, after we finish with the mathematical part, maybe we'll discuss the more. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Let's, let's concentrate on math mathematical. Okay, other mathematical questions? How many people? Yes, uh, uh, yeah. what is a, a linear programming uh, official primal problem? Because uh, in the lecture I see something, in, the, in Wikipedia I see something else. Yes. I want to know what is the primal? Uh, the, uh, the or if you can I give us the, the local answer, answer for the exam is take it from the lecture. Yes, but and the lecture. The, for the exam, definitely, you must take it from the lecture and development for the, from the lecture. And in general, there are several forms. I, I, am, I, I, am, I stick with this particular form because we, <coughs> we learn a, co a concept of uh, nonlinear programming. And I want you, you to have linear programming as particular case. And this form is yeah. more, most close to nonlinear. Can you, can you there are the other program? forms, and we don't enter this. Linear programming, it's a very rich area. And my course is one of the uh, first courses who left, uh, left linear programming as the basic part of course. Usually, you, optimization course starts for a couple of months, linear programming and simplex method, and on the, then other methods of optimization. <coughs> Uh, we, we, we don't learn it here. It's out of scope. Sorry. Can you, write you can really uh, watch the Wikipedia. Yeah, yes, I'm with you. Sorry. Can you write the primal problem on the board, please? Because in the lectures I saw something else in, in several lectures. Just a second. Maybe. I, I asked you in the questions towards exam only things that were in the lectures. So you. Uh, you should uh, remind me. We, we, we had uh, the the form minimum uh, c transpose x. Yes. Yes, minimum c transpose x. Uh, uh, such that. Such uh, I, a x. Uh, okay. The, there is a delicate point about greater or less equal. Yes. Oh, I, so I really don't, so don't, re don't remember. Yeah, sometimes uh, for convenience. I, I saw yeah. I saw that in the lectures you wrote a x uh, is bigger than uh, than b. A x okay. is greater. Okay. A x a x bigger equal than b. Okay. That's what I saw. Ja, uh, just a second and assume that this was in the lecture, and this is really more uh, convenient for linear programming, say community. Yes. But we, uh, we learned Lagrangian and everything for inequalities in other uh, yes. the, the direction. So, yes. And the, the, that's why I say minus uh, AX minus X minus B uh, less equals zero, yes? Yes. And, and this is, is it, for this, you can apply usual notion of Lagrangian we, we learned. And this, I do in the lecture. You should just follow what was done. Okay, so, so, this is the, so this is the problem, the primal problem, right? Yes. yes. Okay, and the, the, there, there, is no, equivalent, so. there is no constraint about uh, x is bigger than zero. No, or, no. Uh, no, right? Again, there, there are such a, for formulations, I agree with you. But in the lecture, I try to keep it as simple as possible and as close as possible to nonlinear program. Okay, I think you just need to give the, the primal problem in the exam and then we can talk. Okay, just yeah, just write it from the lecture. And yeah. uh, I leave it to my activists. Yes, to volunteers, activists and volunteers. Thank you. Okay, other questions? I have a question. <coughs> Uh, yeah, who, who is talking? Just tell your name. Boy. Right. Boy. Okay. Uh, regarding the limited BFGS. Yes. Um, I wasn't sure if when we compute uh, iteration R, we save only like the last 10 vectors of U, U and uh, V. Or do we save U1, V1, and all the way to the current iteration? Do we save only like the last 10 
That's yes. Or all of them. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, it's the, uh, that's why it's called lim uh, limited memory. Uh, exactly like it was in the lecture. You 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 only uh, keep in memory. Uh, you you may say you and we or other may say. Uh, difference in gradients and difference in axis, yes? Yeah, but it means that when I approximate like the next um, direction, I do it on, I do it only on, on the last, uh, last 10 vectors. Like I don't have uh, U1, V1 and so on, I have only the last one. So I, I approximate the inverse Asian only by, only by this. But by last, this uh, and uh, identity matrix or scaled identity or something like this initial question, and this exactly as in the lecture, you you don't have to. Rem and again, again, if you, if you will uh, open textbook on uh, LBFGS, you will find the much more complicated than I gave you in the lecture. And if uh, somebody really wants to dive in the details, and he will uh, open uh, Nocidal and write book, he will know much more important technical details, but of course, for exam, it's enough to know what was in the lecture. Okay, I just, I'm sorry that I'm uh, asking it once again. I'm just we're already approximating the, the inverse of the Asian, and in LBFGS, we're saying, all right, although we are already approximating, we are giving up on some of the U and V, the first one, because we can uh, the last one. So it means that we are even like, Something on whiteboard, it, it might be easier for us to, to talk. Uh, so I, I have uh, some uh, mu multiplied by identical matrix plus uh, symbolically, like it was in the lecture, yes? This matrix uh, plus uh, yes. one more such a matrix and so on. Uh, and I need uh, to multiply all this with uh, gradient, yes, to, to get uh, direction. And if, if I want uh, the whole B BFGS, I can keep in memory many such pairs, but for limited memory BFGS, I say that I keep only, say, five such pairs plus identity matrix. So uh, what was your question? I'm sorry I didn't hear you because there was a little uh, uh, probably internet problem. Yeah, was some in interruption in, in the internet. Okay, for for usual, I I would tell in this way. For usual BFGS, this would express everything if you keep everything in the memory. But for limited memory BFGS, we say that we keep only last uh, five such pairs and uh, identity matrix. So what is your question? My question, I understand that this is the process. I kind of kind of like don't understand how this approximation is good enough if we take ah, only why some of it's the good enough? We're probably just trying to approximate it ah. and then we're taking only, yeah. Uh, it is deeper than, uh, our possibility to discuss. I really want you to, okay. if you are interested, if you, yeah, of, of course it's out of scope of exam. If you are interested, uh, I, I encourage you to, to open the book of Nocidal and Wright. Because Nocidal is author of this method. So he explains it well. Uh, we can discuss now. I, it's difficult for me Right. Uh, okay. It's difficult for me. It's a bit challenging for me to give you clear uh, uh, on only hand waving and saying that this is uh, good enough approximation. Why exactly? It is somehow it leads even. I think it may even lead to conjugate gradient method when you have quadratic function. It's uh, out of sorry. Okay, um, sorry, I'm very sorry. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Thank you. Yes, yes. Michael, um, yes. it's Nikki. Um, I have a question about 
question 33. Um, I'll share the screen so you can see the question uh, itself. So question 33, you ask us to develop a weak conic duality via Lagrangian. Ah, um, yes, so you, you should look. Okay, look so my question. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. The, lecture. the only thing I'm trying to understand is until what, which part you're expecting us to develop because of, from Everything. this point on, no, but from this point on, you only refer to F, F, Fx, which is uh, linear. Ah, okay, y yes, you are right. And uh, uh, in general, when we are talking about semi-definite programming, we, we, we are talking usually about linear semi-definite programming. So Fx is uh, inner product of C with X. It only helped me uh, to write it in more familiar way, yes? Yeah, okay. You, so at the end, you, you will assume that, yes, it is C, uh, C transpose X. So wait, in this question, it's not enough to develop only until here? No, no, until end. It's not very long. It's okay, challenging, so. but not very long lecture, yes? Okay. It's, so I'm just, uh, I'm something like, I don't remember yeah, how yes. long it is. It's like 15 minutes or? Yes. So I'm just mentioning that I think it's important because yes, you yes. don't say here we have some weak conic duality in your well, function, so, no, like here we use yeah. uh, Okay. So you please uh, uh, Nikki help me with it's Nikki, yes? With uh, reformulating the, this question. Yeah, I'll, I'll write this question better. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, okay. I'll, so I have problem I'll, with, I'll, my, uh, with my with my internet probably or with yours. Maybe I need to switch yeah. into. Okay. Uh, you you uh, you want to stop your sh screen sharing or you need uh, want so something else? Okay. Uh, so more more questions. Uh, we have. Uh, I have a question about the truncated neutron. Uh, Barack. Something going back with, with my internet or your maybe. With yeah. Uh, tell it again. Sorry. You said yeah. You... Wow. I need to. Uh, uh, I, I try. Do you hear me now? Uh, close up your, your wow. camera. Wow. My internet. Close up your camera. Uh, uh, ju uh, just a second. I, I have question to to other people. Do do you hear me me well or not? Is it problem with my internet or something uh, else? Huh? Well. It it says Michael Zibulat. Network bandwidth is low. Wow. It says you network I, bandwidth uh, is let low. Me try. Oh, it take a lot. I, uh, let me try again. Ah, talk <laughs> as I can. That is on. I'll try again. I'll try to reconnect to, uh, to other network. Uh, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yeah. Is it, is it better now? Because I switched. Yeah, it's laggy. Between cell phone and it's very, very uh, laggy. Now it's laggy? The previous was better? Yeah. Okay, I will switch. Mm, no. The, 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 no, no, it's better, but yeah. uh, it's. Just a second. But what was better? Half a minute ago? This or one now? is better. This one is now better. Now it's better. Now it's better. Okay, let's yeah, stay with yes. this. No, no, thank you. Bro. Sorry. Okay, so the question is about a truncated Newton. You're asking us. You're asking us to motivate and describe truncated Newton. Uh, yes. First of so, all, watch uh, the video, and I hope. Yes. 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 Okay. I am with you. Yes. Take take in account that every time we we watch the video and we watch it maybe several times before. Okay. We we don't do it just from our head. No. No. Okay. J uh, just second. The, the right sequence, I would say. Watch video, write down the answer. Okay, this is what, this is what we are doing. And, we, and we then to... you don't need to return to, to the video once more. No, yeah, but if you didn't realize the video uh, fully, so you go back to the, you, you see the video and then you 
answer the question and maybe you need to go back to the video to answer the question okay it happens uh, okay so so i go to the you, question. you you also you also can use my slides do 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 you 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 know that there are slides yes, yes. Uh, snapshots uh, from from the i know i know i know i use it i use it also not everyone uh, is smart as you we also we need to go back to the video several times when we answer a question okay so I, i'll go to the question uh, and uh, as, as, I, as I understood the, uh, the truncated Newton method, uh, we want to ease the, the calculation when we calculate the, 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 the direction uh, when, uh, when we use conjugate gradient to descent, right? Just a uh, just second. Um, you know what? I, I will try to... Uh, put my slide introduction introduction to optimization. Maybe I will put my slide, and it will be easier for not, for us to discuss. Just a second. Truncated Newton method. Here it is. Three three slides, as I see. Let me share my screen. Okay. Yeah. I was a little bit younger then. Uh, okay, do you want uh, yeah, uh, uh, just a second? Uh, one, more se uh, one, one more second. We have this three time. slides. Do, do you, we, we have three slides. Which one do you yeah. want to discuss? Yeah. This one? Okay, okay. Or the, the next one? It's okay. I wrote everything in the slides. I wrote it in, the, in my notebook. So. Okay. We can we can just go through them. So motivate and uh, describe. This is what you ask. Motivate and yes. describe the method. Okay. So first of all, as I as I understood it, we want to ease the calculation. Uh, yeah. when, when we the calculation for solving a Newton system of equations. Yes. Yes. Newton Newton's equation is the Hessian multiplied by z equals uh, mean minus uh, the gradient, right? Yes, what, what, uh, what you see now is my pointer. Yeah, this is what you want to, to make uh, better or faster. Yes, like that, right? yes. Okay. Yes. Um, but um, but in, in w when we use this uh, method, we also uh, take a few steps of, gra of the conjugate gradient. Yes. Until uh, uh, this, this uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so the methods said two things. Once she want, once she want to ease this calculation, and yes. once she want uh, to take a several step, maybe not uh, n step as the dimension yes. of the. Uh, yes, exactly. Because if you will take n step, it may be more expensive even than uh, decomposing. It's than doing Cholesky factorization in in case of dense matrix. In case of sparse matrix, it's, it's still maybe good. Yes, your your. Okay, Yes, I am with you. Yes. Okay. So, if if we if we have a Cholesky factorization, yes, we we, we already know how to do this uh, this multiplication effectively, right? Yes, yes, yes. You're right. So we just take this in account. We if you have a Cholesky right? factorization, you solve the Newton equation without con. You don't need conjugate gradient. Yes. Yes, I saw, but I but I do several steps. I don't uh, take all the steps. No, no, just we, we are this. What we discuss now. Thank you very much. You you really asking good questions today. What we discuss now it's so called internal inner iterations. We we discuss what should be done for single Newton step. For uh, what we learned before, it's to do Cholesky factorization of H and solve the, the equation. And what we okay. say now, <coughs> okay, we will do this is uh, very roughly just by several conjugate gradient steps for minimizing this quadratic function. And then we will compute Newton direction uh advance to new x and repeat all this process uh i am not sure whether i i'm afraid that you are right that it was not very clear said in the lecture 
There are not the... enough uh, information in the lecture and also in the tutorials. It's not in the tutorials. We have maybe three slides also. Yes, uh, but, but uh, now uh, let, let's uh, accomplish it now and uh, let put it okay, okay. as info to other students. So this is internal iteration just for solving Newton system. Then we go to new new X and return to this process once again. So, so what we do is instead of solving this equation, yes, we want to minimize this with a conjugate gradient uh, method mm -hmm. uh, without n step, but uh, some k less than n uh, steps, right? Yes, we uh, solve it approximately. Right? Yes. Yes. We want to redound, we do a Taylor expansion. We want to redound some of the other uh, parts of the Taylor expansion. Only the. No, the only quadratic. Model. Only quadratic. Well, what is written here? Yeah. This is actually the, quadratic exactly. Taylor, uh, second order Taylor expansion. Yes. This is the motivation. We want to minimize, but only the quadratic, not all the. All the only the quadratic, but the pay attention. Even for in usual Newton method, we minimize this, this expression. In truncated yes. Newton method, we minimize it approximately, not exact. It just does yes, several steps in direction of its minimum. Yes, yes, we don't take enough steps. So, and then so there is outer, and, and then we compute this Newton approximate Newton direction. We can do line search, yes. And then for new Newton step again, we will repeat everything from the beginning. Okay, so the truncated Newton method says instead of solving this equation, uh, minimize this with a with conjugate gradient descent till some uh, conditions is satisfied, right? Yes. Yes. And the conditions uh, need to calculate this uh, multiplication and this multiplication, right? We need to calculate. Yes, but but any case, you you calculate it uh, even here, so it's not extra calculation. You calculate it any okay. case. Okay. Yeah, on, yeah, on you're right. Case. Okay, we need to calculate it here, and when we calculated this, you also in the next slide, you say how to calculate uh, the you, matrix. Do you want me to to move to the next slide? No. Uh, wait, can you explain what is this here? This this star. Ah, uh, just a second, just a second. HD. Ah, maybe. It's D0, I thought. I, I D0, I think yes, it's the uh, original, original D. Uh, by the way, it's uh, quite often. Yeah, yeah. The D0. The previous D? The initial, the initial. The, the initial, one, yes. Yeah, but, but this is this the age of the current iteration, right? And the G. Yes. Only the D is the initial. Maybe of, of, the, of the current outer, uh, we, we should say there are outer iterations, current Newton ah. step, yes? Current yeah. external iteration, yes. Maybe it's better to say DK because we, iter we for this slide, we just calculate the Newton direction. It's just the calculation of the Newton direction, and we do it all over again for every outer iteration. Yes. And it, but it then we will the have uh, to, to enter two, two indices. D, DK is index of outer iteration. Do you hear me? Again, my internet. Yes, yeah. yes, we hear you. Yeah. Uh, it, it's better to say in words at, the, at this stage. Or if anybody wants to really to write down it as algorithm, I, I, I believe you, you, you can find it everywhere or, and write yourself, then you will have two indices, yes? One external and uh, the other internal of uh, conjugate gradient. Yes. Okay. And maybe, Michael, we should put on the right side, we should put dk minus one, not... Uh, oh, DK, dk zero, I don't know. Uh, how to start, uh, I should uh, try to remember, or it may even start with dk equals zero. This particular technical thing I don't remember, of course. Yeah. Okay, but, uh, okay, okay. So, again, I'll summarize the truncated data method. It's, you want to ease the calculation. Instead of solving this, we solve this with, with a conjugate gradient, 
uh, with a, a condition that may be satisfied before end steps. Okay. Yes, yes. And then in the next slide, in the next slide. Uh, would you like me to move? Yes, yeah? yes, 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 yes. This one or even another one? Another one? Yes. Okay, yes. It, and here it's still uh, uh, under the, the title of truncated Newton. So what you're saying here is how to do a, a, mul a multiplication of a matrix uh, in which we can write it uh, by multiplication of several mat matrices. You, you are just telling us how to do a multiplication uh, technically in MATLAB. Uh, uh, no, uh, I, 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 am just, uh, I am just motivating that to multiply by Hessian is often much easier than compute Hessian itself. Because quite often Hessian have this special structure. Yes, if, if we know if we, if we know that the Hessian is, mul is a multiplication of yes, the... Yes, uh, just as, a, as, a, as an example. But uh, there is one more important point very general point. Uh, to multiply arbitrary vector by Hessian, it's about the same computational cost as compute gradient. And, it, yes, and, the and uh, by the way, it brings us back. I, did, I don't have this proof here. I only motivate it. But it brings us back to the beginning of our meeting, yes? That to multiply by Jacobian, it's actually a very easy operation. It's, about the same path vector, but even through simpler graph than function computation. And here, uh, the, yes. the same. I, I j just wanted to defend that even if you have a function with very expensive Hessian, to multiply by Hessian and in conjugate gradient, you need only multi multiplication by Hessian. It's, it's cheap, it's like compute gradients once. Or, or function ones. Okay. Um, but but in the in the conjugate gradient, you, you say that in the conjugate gradient, we have, uh, we have multiply Hessian only by uh, by vectors, right? If if you if you if you solve if you minimize quadratic function, yes. Yes. With conjugate gradient. You will discover that in the algorithm you will multiply this matrix H by some vectors, and no the orthogonal vectors. The orthogonal vectors, you mean? Huh? You uh, mean the vectors, vectors of uh, directions, previous directions. Yeah, for the Gram Schmidt. For the Gram Schmidt. It's not for. Uh, it, it's in the end from Gra for Gram Schmidt, but actually, uh, let's remember the slide number 80, 81. Let's go back. Uh, we, we have very nice conversation. And uh, I, I am glad about this conversation. It's, uh, it exists only because you are actively preparing now. Everything is active in your brain. Okay, let, let's go to conjugate gradient. Uh, for example, here, I want to minimize this function, yes? Do you see my slide? Yeah. And what will happen? In the process of conjugate gradient, I only will multiply Q by some vectors, yes? And, and even I motivate that you need, don't need to multiply Q by X, but only Q by some directions, by previous steps, yes? Only this you need to multiply and that's all. So you need Hessian vector multiplication. One, one Hessian vector multiplication per conjugate gradient step. <coughs> yes, yes. So, so, so this is why why you bring the the tip there, right? It's just a tip. Wait, uh, just a second. So, we, uh, should we leave this slide? Okay, I, I understood it. It answered my question. So, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, just to summarize, the motivation is less computation and we do an approximate, uh, approximation. It's why to use truncate Newton method. Yes, yes. And uh, one more very interesting observation in this lecture. If I if want I'm... to... Do you hear me? Hello? Now, 
Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Now we, we... Uh, one more very interesting observation in this lecture. If I don't have Hessian multiplication, I have a black box in my function, which only knows to compute function and gradient. It's very easy to approximate a product of Hessian with some vector. And you already know, you are experienced with this. You, 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 you did it even in your homework. Or maybe don't, I try to remember. To multiply Hessian with some vector z, it just do some small displacement in the direction of z and take difference of gradients and div divide it by this epsilon. I hope that you hear me. I need voice. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We didn't do it in homework, but we do some fixed with numerical uh, differentiation. Yes, yes. It was, di it was different, I, I, I agree with you. But this is very important uh, thing. So I, I may use uh, truncated Newton, even in situations when I don't have any function, multi any procedure which multiplies by Hessian, only black blocks which computes gradients. It's enough for me. So the motivation, if we don't have the, the Hessian, and if we want to approximate uh, the expression, the minimization. And it so you you don't approximate Hessian, you approximate product of Hessian with some vectors, and those vectors come in process of conjugate gradient. Okay. In so process of conjugate the gradient, thing. conjugate gradient asks, please uh, multiply Hessian by my some current vector, yes? And okay, okay you say okay, and do this. Michael, yeah. uh, I don't remember, in the conjugate gradient, does it find, first of all, the, the vector, the, the conjugate vector, with the biggest uh, um, projection on the uh, stack? Uh, actually, the, there, is, uh, there are some claims that uh, it uh, kills uh, uh, largest eigenvalues of the matrix H. But it, it's not relevant to, to the exam, but yes. The, there is a property of conjugate gradient that uh, reduces directions of largest uh, eigenvectors, or, or correspond to subspaces of largest eigenvectors. Yeah. Related to la largest eigenvalues of the matrix. So it definitely will be enough to take just a few of them instead of... Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's always a question, it's always a challenge. To uh, truncate it, Newton is delicate method. Sometimes you find out that 10 iterations is good, sometimes maybe you need 100. It's delicate, it's not uh, universally recommended, but in some situations it's, it's maybe may be best, best choice. <coughs> if you don't know which method to use in uh, very large scale optimization, use the uh, LBFGS, limited memory BFGS as first choice. And maybe a truncated Newton for special situations. Uh, Michael? Yes. Here, so, so here you said if we know that the SCI is uh, A transpose VA or something like that, we, we do the multiplication like this, right? Yes, it's yes. Cheaper, it's cheaper, right, okay. But if we don't know the SCI is like this, and we have to find the SEN because we don't know the SEN is like something. Okay. I don't know. Yes, yes. Who is talking? Sorry. Barak, Barak. How do we do it? Boaz? Barak. Barak, 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 sorry. Uh, so th this was my claim that if you, if you have a, bla uh, if you have a function of MATLAB, Yes, which uh, computes your function or computes your gradient. Multiplying by Hessian, you should remember that Hessian is Jacobian of gradient. Do you know this? Yeah. Hessian is Jacobian of gradient. It's like second derivative is uh, a derivative of first derivative, yes? Yes, yes. The same way Hessian is Jacobian of gradient. And if you have a computational graph for computing gradients, 
you already know that multiply by Hessian is cheap. It's different than is written here. It's a uh, this was written before I introduced uh, this computational graph into the course. And if we don't have computational graph, we don't have computational graph. You mean? Uh, you have you, a function. You, uh, j just a second. You mean you have some program in your computer which computes gradient, but you don't want to open it. Yes. If you agree Maybe. to open it, there is automatic differentiation which you used now in PyTorch, uh, everywhere, yes, which will actually give uh, the job for you. But if you don't want to open it, you have this one more option, which is shown here. You just okay. uh, progress a bit in direction Z and take difference of gradients and divide by epsilon. And it's uh, very practical. It's quite often used, this approach. So if you want to multiply Hessian by a vector, if we know that Hessian is like A, B, A, we do it like this. And if we don't know this, we always can use this if you know the gradient. Yes, and, and uh, something in between and very important, if you have a program which computes gradient, you can always build program which computes multiplication by Hessian, which will be cheap. And can you repeat the last two sentences because you were lagging? Uh, if you have a program which computes gradient, you can build another program which computes product of Hessian with arbitrary vector. Exactly, not, not in this fashion. But ah, not exactly. in this way, not in this way. Not in this way, but exactly. This is called automatic differentiation and it is related to computational Jacobian of multiplication by Jacobian of computational graph, which you already have in our course. And if somebody is lazy and he has PyTorch, for example, PyTorch will do this work for, for him. It's, it's not just about laziness uh, because now you can do some, some crazy architectures and you don't need to, you can't yes, by hand yes, yes. the differentials. You, you are right, but our, our course is very basic. So all people do not know how it happens, and you do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you for that, Michael. <laughs> okay, pleasure. More? Well, uh, yeah, who, who is tired may go, and who has still energy may ask more, more questions. So, uh, 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 I want uh, a question. Uh, uh, what uh, you said in 27 uh, method of conjugate gradient of quadratic function show and explain manifold property. Yes, uh, yes. What Thank do you mean by that? Yes. We have a okay. okay, okay. I understand your, your question. It's very good. I'm staying with slides. Just a second. I know the manifold property says that you yeah, every, yeah, yeah. every reaction by itself you can solve and it is the optimal. Yeah, thing. give me one second. We will get to, to the right slide and then it will be much, much easier for us. We done. What was the okay, question? Okay, so the, this is... Question 27. On. Okay. On. Just a second. Okay. So uh, this is a development of method of conjugate directions. And uh, it's all uh, here also the Taylor expansion we use. Uh, remind me how was question for, uh, formulated? Uh, method of conjugate direction for quadratic function shown and explained manifold property. Ah, show the expanded manifold property. Yeah. Okay, expanded manifold property. But if you hear this, we use, again, in, 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 in conjugate directions, we use uh, the approximation and the Taylor expansion. No, 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 uh, just a second. First of all, we concentrate on minimization of quadratic function. We forget about nonlinear optimization. 
we are in very limited setting. We need to minimize quadratic function. Okay. And uh, we show that if we go by conjugate directions, then uh, actually we, we minimize some of our minimization is minimize some of separable functions. Uh, yes. uh, separable functions, so, some of independent function. Phi, phi i, each uh, of them depends on its own alpha i, how, what is alpha i, how much we go in uh, conjugate direction, yes? In, uh, yes. Here, you, you see my pointer, I hope? Yeah, yeah, here. Okay. So it says that when we do the first uh, one dimensional optimization in alpha one, we achieve the minimum of our ent entire function in subspace of this first direction. And when we optimize in alpha two, we get uh, minimum, we get minimum in subspace. We mi minimize in direction two, but we don't destroy optimality in direction one because of this separability property. Mm -hmm. If I have a sum of functions, each of them depends on its own variable. It's very easy, yes? When yes. I minimize in variable two, I can keep variable one optimal. And in this way, automatically, I got minimum in span of those two vectors, d1 and d2, and so on. So in every step, I get minimum of my entire function in the subspace of span by d1, d1 and d2, d1, d2, d3, this uh, expanding uh, affine uh, subspace of manifold. This is question number 27, right? Or I don't right, remember uh, numbers. No, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. okay. So this yeah, is question yeah. number 27. Yeah. And it's uh, phrased as uh, show the expanding manifold property. So yes. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll actually, uh, actually, you should know this development on this slide. On this slide and, and this, is the, you, you should know those two slides, I, I would say in this way. Uh, it isn't in any question. You should know, you, you, you should know to write down development of those two slides. Okay. It's a little bit challenging. I think it is problematic. What is the second slide? The second slide is very simple. The, the, the main uh, challenge, but uh, it, just it's simple, but it's uh, the central. It's important. Just to explain the perpendicularity, uh, uh, that's actually the property which makes the um, optimization on each direction um, stay relevant at each step. Like the just listen very carefully explanation of those two slides and be, be able to write it down. And this is the requirement of question 27? I would put it in this way, yes. And those slides, actually, you, you know, I don't re require for you to know much about conjugate uh, gradient uh, development, but those two slides, it's the heart of conjugate gradient. So we need to know that how to that we you use the uh, this nudge and we because the crowd mitzavim as kilo mekabim You are talking about yes, you are talking about. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question about it? Yes. Uh, D D I are orthogonals in in Q norm, right? Yes. So how do we know that we can write S uh, as a linear combination of DI if they may be not orthogonal uh, in the regular world, right? Yes. If, if uh, okay. They are not orthogonal in the uh, usual sense, <coughs> but uh, they they are linearly independent. 
if I have a set of vectors which are Q orthogonal, they are linearly independent. Any vector okay. may be expressed as the, as the weighted sum. Okay, I didn't know that they are uh, linearly independent. Yes. Michael, but um, should we uh, know how to write all all of the all all of the formula all all of the formulas, or should we explain uh, in words what uh, what you just uh, did? I hope that this slide is not very technical. You, I I I wanted to ask you to be to able to write down this slide just yourself it's not very difficult you you see we, we take quadratic function and we say that we have set of q orthogonal directions and we, we say that the, the very important uh, for, first of all it's uh, always healthy to ex uh, express quadratic function like in uh, taylor expansion around the current point x x naught yes okay le, le, let me do go go with you in three mi three minutes through through this slide okay if you are not overtired do you want I, you you are too quiet i'm afraid about it. Do, do you hear me by, by the way my internet again is uh, Michael, the, 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 yeah, the, the connection was bad. Okay, connection. okay. Uh, now, now it's 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 better. Let's go yeah. to together. We have a quadratic function. First of all, it's easier to express it around the current point x x naught. It's more easy expressions. Yeah, we express it in terms of displacement from x naught, and the formula is like ta Taylor expansion. Yes. Okay, yeah. are, you, are you with me? You, you should confirm uh, all the time because the internet is not stable. Okay, wow. okay, okay. Okay, so, and now the very important observation that this term is actually Q norm of S. Yes? Which term is the Q, uh, Q yes, norm of by S? Def, by def definition, this term. Yes, yeah, squared Q, 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 Q norm of S. Ah, here, I, yes. You see, I, I write it here immediately. Yes. 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 Without the half. Yeah. Okay. And uh, now you say that if S has a, an expansion in uh, orthogonal basis, in Q orthogonal in this, in this case, so it's norm, it's just sum of squares of co coefficients multiplied by Q norm of the orthogonal vectors. And we substitute it here. It requires some, some effort, but uh, uh, it requires some, some effort. Uh, what can I say? What, what about the first term after uh, F naught plus G naught transpose times S? This term is also separable. It's some G I S I. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It, it, okay. Uh, after maybe I made it too too fast. This uh, resulting term will be separable. Yes. How, how did you do this exactly? Because it's it's not clear. S okay, is not okay. Uh, just a second. First of all, I substitute S here. Yes, I take S from here. Uh, uh, okay, I substitute. Okay, okay. I, I get this. Yeah. And uh, those are numbers. G zero D, D I are numbers. Some alpha I by some numbers. It's separable. So every term just depend on on its own. Uh, sorry, I I am also a bit tired towards the end of the day. This term depends only on its own alpha, and that's all. Yes. If, yeah. Uh, not the same alpha. This in this. Yes. 
the same alpha, yes. Same alpha. So, so and, and we call it phi i of alpha, yes, of alpha i. Yes, so okay. this is, this expression. You know, I'm thinking more, more and more how, how right is to require from you all this technical stuff. May, may, maybe it's, 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 it's better just to, to know the first line and the last line. And from this derive this uh, next slide is important, yes? The next yeah, slide is the consequence of the last line. And, 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 and this, that S is. To remember that S is, uh, can be written uh, such yeah. as this, it will be hard to remember in the exam that you can write it right there if you don't do the all development, but to remember it all will be hard. Uh, I can challenge you, try to write it in the, in the, in the question. Try to write it in the question, not writing the, the real whole answer, but you may try to write in, as a part of the question. Let me challenge you. If there will be a, a volunteer to formulate this question in easy way, uh, I'm willing to, to hear. Okay. Let's load it. I will try to do it. Okay. The, the important, the, the next slide, definitely you, you should be able Michael, to maybe write up. The next slide, just- Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, uh, do, do you hear me? The, the next slide- Yes. The next slide, definitely you should be able to write your set. It's uh, very important. Michael, is there a chance we can maybe uh, do a short session maybe next week about the rephrasing? Only the question we rephrase or something like that. Or? Okay, 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 okay. P uh, put it in your group first. And we, we will okay, see. we will uh, try to discuss okay. it there. Okay, good, good. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. With this slide, everything is clear, or you you want also to discuss it? Um, yeah. Michael. If we are tired, also it's the end of the day. Maybe we should end for to, today, and okay. uh, if we we'll ne need to meet again, we can always uh, start one. What uh, would we say, Sunday around uh, two, what, for example? Is it, is it good? You are the boss. No, no, I am asking you. Is, is it good time? I think, yeah, yeah, I think it's good. I yeah, think you can't ask 10 people because everyone will be comfortable in a different time, so you have to choose. Uh, I ask only on, only you who, who are present. I think it's okay with me. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's try Sunday at uh, Tokyo. It's really too much for one meeting. I agree with you. Yeah, just let's finish the question. We want to stay here that uh, only that uh, we every time we advance in in, uh, in one direction we don't uh, um, no without we'll damaging we optimality in the previous directions yes that's what we want to say in this uh, slide yes and that's why and and this uh, important corollary that new gradient is uh, orthogonal to this subspace so at least everything which is told with respect to this slide in the lecture, I, I want you to, to know. Okay. Yeah, I think it'd be very, uh, very Maybe you, you know, let's, let's decide to, together. This slide is, is important because what you told is already here in this formula, yes? yes? Yeah, this is the, the, the one that is important. Yes. Okay, the, let's uh, agree to, together that, uh, we re require only to know to reproduce what is talking about this slide. Yeah, what you want to want to say this final here that you don't uh, that you don't uh, no rest at, uh, yes uh, no no this, this is uh, which demonstrates if you are, if you are optimal if you are optimal in subspace. To motivate that gradient is orthogonal to subspace, it's one more statement that you also, it's good to know it. Okay. Okay. 
do you want uh, something else today or we are finished? We, we are finished maybe for, for today, yes? I think so. And uh, you can write down, uh, okay, write down in the group, in, in the, even in the reply to my message, the next uh, reception hour, Sunday at 2 p.m. Also, uh, I think for, I don't know, uh